Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zhong. Today I'm going to share with you how to create an easy abstract spline animation using Blender 3.5 geometry nodes. This artwork is actually inspired by this artist right here on Behance. He made this really cool single line art using Photoshop and I saw it and I thought it was really cool. So I figured out how to recreate this into a shoelaces in Blender 3D using geometry nodes. Alright, so let me walk you through what we are going to do in this video. First, we'll start by create our scene using a curve as the base shape. Then, to add depth to the curve, we'll need to push each vertex slightly further apart to prevent them from sticking together. Then, we'll convert the curve to mesh and create the aglet. After that, we'll animate it. Once the animation is complete, we'll add lighting, material, and camera to finish the scene. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So first, we need to start from drawing the curve. So press A to select everything and delete them. So now we need to import this photo as a guide. I will put the link at the description below. Please download it and follow along the video. In the viewport, press numpad 1 to see the front view. Then, drag the photo into the viewport. Press N to toggle the transform banner. Go to item and put it at the center. Then we can turn down the opacity a little bit. So let's go to this object data properties tab. Take the opacity. Let's reduce it to 0.4 maybe. Then add a cube. Go into edit mode. Press A to select all vertices. Press M and merge all vertices at center. Bring the vertices here. We want to draw the curve from left all the way to right. Let's split the screen. Go to geometry node, add a new geometry. Then I want to turn this into a curve so that we are easy to see the exact spline shape we want. So let's add a mesh to curve. Then add a set spline top. Turn it to nubs. Then let's continue to draw it. Continue to draw it. It don't have to be very precise. If you are lazy to draw it, you can download this spline from the description below as well. Okay, after we done it, let's exit edit mode. Okay, now let's frame two of this and name it turn mesh to curve. Then now, we want to add depth to the curve. We need to push each vertex slightly further apart to prevent them from sticking together. So to do it, let's add a set position. Then we need to get the index of all the points on this curve. So add spline parameter and connect the index to offset. Then we want to move the point towards y axis. So let's add a combine x y z. Connect to y. Then currently the gap in between each vertices is too far. So to reduce the distance, let's add a vector map node. Change the operation. To scale, reduce the scale. Let's put minus 0 0.01 maybe. Let's hide this image for now. Okay, now they are not overlapping together anymore. So let's frame four of this node. Name it avoid point to overlap together. Next, we can start to animate it. So as usual, to control the animation, I want to set up an empty sphere as a controller. The vertices that come into contact with the empty sphere will move downward while the vertices that don't touch it will remain in their original position. Okay, so to do that, 
at the set position again. Then in the 3D viewport, add an empty sphere. Rename it Effector. Drag it into the node editor. Connect the location of the effector to offset. Then add a position node. Add a vector map node and set it to distance. Connect the position node to the distance. So by doing this, we are actually telling Blender we need to get the distance between the location of the effector and the position of the vertices. Now, as we move the effector, it begin to work. But if we scale the effector, it's no response at all. So let's add a map range. Connect the scale of the effector to from max. Scale the effector again. Okay, now it's work. And then, currently, you can see the vertices that touch by the effector is randomly moved to x, y, z axis. This is not what we want. We only want the vertices to move in z axis. So to do that, let's add a combine x, y, z. Connect it to z axis. I think we can also add a noise texture to further randomize the position of the vertices. Change this to 4D, reduce the scale to 1, reduce the details to 0 and the roughness to 0 as well. Increase the distortion to 1.6 maybe. Drag the controller again to check the result. Okay, now you can see when we move the controller from left to right, some of the vertices are not really moving. This is because some of the vertices is not touched by the effector. So let's try to scale up the effector. Drag the controller again to check the result. Okay, now it's look better, but I still feel like it's not natural. The animation isn't smooth enough. I think this might be because the curve lack of vertices and the vertices aren't evenly distributed. So if you're not sure what I mean, Let's visualize it by quickly add an instant on point node. Add Q as instant object. Scale it down to 0 0.05 maybe. Hold Ctrl Shift, right mouse click and drag it to instant on point. Connect set position to point. So now we can see the vertices are not equally distributed. Some parts have a lot of vertices while other parts have fewer. So to solve this issue, Let's add a resample curve before the set position. Set it to length. Now the vertices are evenly distributed. Let's decrease the length to 0 0.005 maybe. Let's delete three of this node. Drag the effector again to see the result. Okay, this is a lot better now. Now let's frame all this node. Name it animation. Next, we can start to turn curve to mesh. So now, let's add a curve to mesh node. Add a spiral as the profile curve. Turn the rotation to 1. Decrease the start radius and end radius to 0 0.015 maybe. Decrease the height to 0. And now, we need to fill cap. I want the cap to be a rounded shape. So to do it, let's add an instant on point node. Hold Ctrl Shift, right mouse click and drag the curve to mesh to instant on point. Then we need to connect the set position to instant on point. Then add a UV sphere, connect it to instant. Then we only want the UV sphere to clone on the start point and end point. So to do that, let's add an end point selection. Connect it to selection. Then we need to delete half of the sphere. So let's add a delete geometry. Then we need a normal node. Add a compare node with equal. Connect the result to selection. Change this from element wise to direction. Put 1 for the z axis. Angle to 0. Then adjust the epsilon to delete some polygon. Put 1.5 maybe. Then we need to rotate the cap. 
So let's add a curve tangent node. Connect it to the rotation. Then we need a line Euler to vector. Connect the curve tangent to vector. Change this to Z axis. By doing this, we are actually make the instant object point to the same direction along the curve. Then we need to select this sphere and turn it around. So let's add a vector map node. Set it to scale. Then to select this sphere, let's add an endpoint selection. Then we only want to select the endpoint, so let's change the start size to zero. Then add a switch node. Turn it to float. Connect the selection to switch. Connect the output to scale. Then set the force to one, and true to minus one. So that now you can see one of the sphere are point to the start point, and another one is point to the end point. So now we need to reduce the radius of the UV sphere. So let's reduce it to 0 0.015 maybe. Okay, now you can see we done the fill cap with rounded shape. So now let's frame all this node. Press Ctrl J to frame it. Press F2 and name it fill cap. Okay, next we need to merge the point of the cap here because currently they are two separate objects. So before we merge the point, we need to add a realize instant. Add it after the instant on point node because currently the cap is actually an instant object and we can't really merge instant object. Then to merge them, let's add a merge by distance. Add it after the joint geometry. Then we need to select the point that we want to merge. So let's add an edge neighbor node. Then add a compare node with the operation is equal. Connect the result to selection. Set the equal to 1. I will explain about this later. Make the distance really close to 0. Put 0 0.002 maybe. So now to test if the point is really merged, let's quickly convert our geometry node. Go to edit mode, point on any polygon and press L. Okay, now we can see all the point is connected. So let's undo a few steps to get our geometry node back. So in case you're not sure what is edge neighbor, let me quickly show you an example. Edge neighbor node is actually output the number of the faces that use the edge as one of their sides. When the value is 1, the edge is a non-manifold boundary edge. Alternately, when the value is 0, the edge is a loose edge, which means the edge that not used by any faces. So when we apply it to our sphere, when we say edge neighbor equal to 1, if you actually select this row of points, you can explore this feature with other geometry yourself so that you can better understand it. Okay, now let's frame all this node and name it merge point for fill cap. Okay, next, to make the curve more visually appealing, I want to add thickness to the start and the end of the curve. So go back to the curve to mesh node, add the fill cap section here. Add a set curve radius. Then add a spline parameter. Connect the factor to radius. Then add a float curve. Let's tidy up this line so that it's easy to read. Then we can adjust the shape we want. Then let's add a math node with multiply to enhance it. And now you can see our fill cap is not stick to the start point and end point anymore. The reason is because we have adjusted the curve radius and now the radius is different than the fill cap. So to fix this issue, in the fill cap section, let's go to the instance on point node, this one. Instead of taking data from the set position here to clone our fill cap, we should take the data from the set curve radius here. Let's connect it to our points in instance on point node. Then let's add a radius node and connect it to scale. Okay, next we need to add aglet at the start point and the end point. So to do that, let's add a joint geometry 
before the group output. Then go to the set curve radius in fill cap section. So from here, let's add an instant on point node. Then we only want to select the start point and end point. In the 3D viewport, let's add a cylinder. Go into edit mode, select the top faces. Press Shift S, cursor to select it. Exit edit mode, go to object, set origin to 3D cursor. Then we need to scale it smaller. Let's put 0 0.017 maybe. For the height, let's increase it to 0 0.09 maybe. Then now press Ctrl A and apply the scale. Then name it Aglet. Hide it for now. Then now drag the Aglet into the geometry node editor. Connect it to instant. Then zoom out. Hold alternate, right click, and connect the instant on point to join geometry. Now you can see the rotation of the Aglet is not right. So to fix this, we can actually take the rotation we make for the fill cap and connect it to the instant on point for the aglet here. Okay, now I think we can scale the aglet slightly larger. Then let's frame all this node and name it aglet. Okay, now we can start to add keyframe to our effector. So in the 3D viewport, Press numpad 1 to see the front view. Drag the effector to left. Make sure your thumb indicator stay at 0. Add a keyframe. Then let's extend the duration to 300 frames maybe. Drag the thumb indicator to 350 maybe. Drag the effector to right. Add a keyframe. I think we can move the effector slightly backward. Add a keyframe. Then we can also add a trim curve as well to trim the line. So let's go to the fill cap section. Go to set curve radius. Tie this up. Then add a trim curve. Click length. Drag the thumb indicator back to zero. Put point one for the end. Add a keyframe. Drag the thumb indicator to three hundred. Put twenty three point five for the end. Add a keyframe again. Drag the thumb indicator to check the result. And now we can see. We have some problem at the aglet part. The aglet size is not scaling proportionally with the curve radius of the curve. So to fix this, go to the aglet section. We need to get the radius of the curve and connect it to the scale at the instant on point node. Okay, now we fix it. Next, we can start to add camera and lighting. So let's add a camera in the 3D viewport. Press Ctrl Alternate Numpad 0 to see the camera view. Put the camera at the center. Set the focal length to 130 maybe. Move the camera slightly backward. Then we can start to add lighting. So let's open another viewport. Add an area light in the 3D viewport. Switch the render engine to Cycles. Device to GPU, turn on render preview mode. Increase the power and size of the area light. Move it higher. Rotate it a little bit. Then let's duplicate another one. I think we can increase the power for this light to 400 maybe. Then I also want to add a backlighting so that our object have a little bit of outline. Let's duplicate the light again. Put it behind our object. Rotate it 180 degree. Press numpad 3 to see the side view. 
rotate it a little bit, bring it closer, increase the power to 2000 maybe. Okay, now we can start to add material. So to do that, let's select the object, go to material tab, add two material. Then let's name this shoelaces. Name this advert. Go back to the geometry node. Go to the joint geometry before the group output. Add a set material here. Add another set material here. Select Aglet for this one. Select Shoelaces for this one. Go to Shader Editor. Select the Shoelaces shader. Press Home button to see the node. And now, first I want to enhance the outline at the edge here. So to do that, let's add a base color first. You can put any color you like. Then let's add a mixed shader. Then we need a diffuse shader. Connect it to the mixed shader. Turn this to white color. Then add a layer weight node. Connect the facing to factor. And now we can adjust the blend amount. Let's put 0.3 for now. And next, I want to add fabric texture to the shoelaces. So to do that, we need to add UV map. So let's go back to our geometry node editor. Go to the fill cap section. Go to the curve to mesh node, this one. Add the capture attribute for both the curve and profile curve. Let's move this a little bit so that they are easy to read. Then add a spline parameter. Connect the length from spline parameter to the capture attribute. Then add a combine XYZ. Connect this to X. Connect this to Y. So let's add a store name attribute after the curve to mesh node. For the data type, select vector. For the domain, select face corner. Connect the combine XYZ to the value. Then let's name it UV map. Or you can also put any name you like. Just remember what it is. So hover and press Ctrl C to copy the name. And now we can go back to the shader editor again. Then we need an attribute node. Paste the name here. Let's connect the vector to the base color to preview the result. Turn on material preview mode. Then we need a wave texture. Set this to Y. Set this to triangle. For the scale, put pi divide 10. Add a vector math node with scale to scale the texture. Add a separate XYZ. Add a math node. Then add two of these together. Connect this to base color. Duplicate the math node and set it to round. Duplicate the round and set it to ping pong. Scale to 1. Add the Voronoi texture after add. Set it to 1D. Connect the value to W. Connect the distance to base color. Set the random to 0. Add multiply add before add. Connect Y axis to add -in. Then from ping pong, add a subtract. Add absolute. Add a multiply after the Voronoi texture. Connect them. Add a multiply here to enhance the effect. Set the value to 3. Scale the Voronoi texture bigger. Put 1 for the multiplier. Then add another multiply here and adjust it.
I think we can add another multiply here to enhance it. Put 3 maybe. Then we can play with this scale as well to adjust the texture size. Then let's add a bump node. Connect it to normal. Then I think we can invert it and increase the strength to 3 maybe. Okay, now let's disconnect this. We don't want to slot anything to our base color. Turn on the render preview again. Let's try to change the background color to black to see the result. I think we can adjust the scale of the texture to 10 maybe. Okay, this is nicer. Then I also want to reduce the specular to 0. We can try to increase this distortion to 1 maybe, so that it looks organic. Then also, I think we can use the new Blender Viewport Compositor to make some tweak to our final artwork. In order to access this, let's go to the Render Preview button, click the drop down button, under the Compositor, click Camera. And by the way, you actually need Blender 3.5 to do this, because this is actually a new feature in Blender 3.5. Let's go to the compositor, take use node, and I actually want to increase the saturation of this artwork, so let's add a hue and saturation. Adjust it. Then we can also adjust the brightness and contrast. Let's put 10 maybe. I think we can also simply add a backdrop for this artwork. So let's add a plane. Go into edit mode. Extrude it. Change the base color to black. Add subdivision surface. Right click and set it to shade smooth. Let's move it lower. Then we can bring this higher. I think we can also add loop cut. Let's turn the roughness to 0.6 maybe. Okay, now we done it. So if you like my video, please subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.